Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and today we're going to be looking at this Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, an art book by Betty Edwards. So let's get into this one then. So this book here is going to be, well this video is going to be a bit different than normal. So normally I go through books for the first time. This book here I've actually studied from it. It was about five or six years ago now I studied from it and I did a, a, a what do you call it, a review on the website and stuff but at the moment the website's a bit broken so somebody emailed me called Alex and they asked if I could give my opinions on this book and, and said could you maybe do a video so this is a little video and what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to talk about the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards but it's quite funny because I had this book, I've had this book for about, well, six years, at least six years, might even be seven or eight, and only a couple of weeks ago I got rid of it because I'm moving. So because I'm moving, I can't take all my books. This was one of the books that went. So the book I originally had had this cover. But So I, what I did was I went on eBay and re-bought the book. So this is actually a different version of the book but this is still the new one apparently the new one has got over 50% new or additional content or something which is quite cool quite cool I thought here she is look little Betty I've never seen her before <laughs> she looks like a chef I could imagine her in the kitchen cooking so my main takeaway from this book is I, I did enjoy this book but not as much as this one so I think if you wanted to learn how to draw, if all you was interested was was how to learn how to draw, I would recommend Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodgson. This book here is so brilliant and it's set up in such a fun, fun way. For, for me, this is the best drawing book in the world ever. This one here was the second drawing book I read and it's... I'm, I'm doing this video five years after having read it but my, my feelings at the time was that this book was much more of a mental thing. So this is why I love this book though. This book is all about how to see as an artist and how to draw what you see, not what you know. And it's got loads of like tips on how to draw basically, teaching you how to draw. This one's doing the same thing but I found it that Basically, the start of it, I remember the start of it being lots of writing without much sort of exercises. But the reason was, it, what this book is amazing for is making you see the illusionary nature of the world, which I feel, I loved it, I did. This is when I started to get spiritual, really, because this book was like talking about how you're looking at stuff, it's... Basically, you can, if, you can ch if you can put your awareness on things, you can change the world. So one of the things they talk about a lot is they talk about flattening the world. So you look at the world and it's all 3D and stuff. When you're drawing, what you want to do is, because they use this thing called a, a picture plane. It was like a sheet of glass. And what you did was, you put that sheet of glass in front of you. And then you just got a, like a, what do you call them? One of those things here, oh, one of those um, whiteboard markers, you could like, you could draw and what you were doing was you was flattening the world. So this, this book started to make me realise that the world is actually, it can be, it can be flat. It's weird, but a lot of this book is talking about the mind. It's talking about the mind. Now, the thing is, I haven't actually got my notes. I've, I've looked high and low for them, but I think I've thrown them away. Because about three weeks ago, I, f I threw a load of load of stuff away. Because again, because I'm moving, I've got to get rid of stuff. I believe that these notes were one of the things I got rid of. But luckily, when I did a review on my website, I did actually take some photos of my notes. So these were from 2016. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of these... I haven't looked at them, basically, I haven't looked at them since I did them. So, but this is some of the things that you'll be sort of drawing in, if you go through this book. So this was my art desk. Oh, I remember that, you had to put the tone down first. 
put the tone down first and then you have to put the dark bits in and, and pull out the lights with an eraser. That was quite fun, that. Oh, now this is brilliant, this one. Chapter 5, Drawing on Your Childhood Artistry. I would say get this book just for this chapter. I almost don't want to tell you what it is because it might spoil it. But what happened was, as a child, well, I started learning how to draw at the age of 33. When I read this book, it must I must have been about 34, 35. So it would have been about 2015. And I hadn't, well, when I was a child, when I was at school, I used to make these little characters. So I'd be at school and instead of like listening to the teacher, I'd be like doing little doodles on my, my notebooks and stuff. And then what happened was in there, she, one of the exercises is she wants you to draw little doodles from your childhood. And then I couldn't believe it. This little guy here, this little guy here, I hadn't seen him for about 20 years. Because I, I drew him as a little child when I was at school. And then when I left school, I just stopped like doing my little doodles. And then and when, when, when I did this exercise and I saw him, I, I got really emotional. Because it was like seeing an old friend. He, but now that I've got a bit more experience about drawing and stuff, I look at him, like especially like I'm, I'm learning now about character design and stuff. I look at him now and I realise something. What I'd done with him was I had put together two of my favourite video game characters into one character. I, I called him Zack. That's what he was called. But if you look at him, so he's got the spikiness of Sonic the Hedgehog. He's got the boots of so Sonic the Hedgehog. But those big massive boxing gloves are straight from Dizzy. So Dizzy is an egg. He's another little video game character from the Commodore 64. So when I look at him now, I realise what I had done was I had put two of my favourite video game characters into my own creation. Which is something they talk about on these articles. They say about bringing together your inspirations to create new characters. I love that and I did that without even thinking, like knowing what I was doing. Which I thought was quite cool. This little car here, I always used to draw Formula 1 cars. Now this here is interesting as well. This was... I always used to draw the turtles as well because I loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And again, when I when I went back to this, knowing a bit more about drawing, I realised what I had done was I had turned the turtles into basic shapes. So you had like one shape there, one shape there, one shape here, and then all of these bits were separate shapes. So again, like they say in the articles and stuff, it's all about your, your basic shapes. So what I, what I learnt was, here look, look at this, art is a lie that makes us realise the truth. <laughs> this, is, this is the sort of thing that this book is doing. It's all about illusions. That is the one reason why I love the book. So I definitely recommend the book because it is, it's, if you're into the mind, if you're fascinated by the mind and stuff, this book is going to be brilliant to read. But if you're going into it wanting to learn how to draw, you are going to get good at drawing, but I think you would actually get better at drawing with this one. And I feel like this one here is a bit more fun. And it's, it's a lot more focused on practical exercises. That's what I remember from it anyway. But I loved that that there was, was one of the best exercises I've ever done in any books. Because it made me feel quite a lot of emotions. This is a little hand, so you had to draw your hand. This was something that Bert Dodgson did as well. What's this here? Look. Oh, little shapes. All about negative shapes. Negative spaces and shapes between things and stuff. This one here. This was all, This was drawing. I, you Basically what you had to do was you had to draw that chair in reverse. So you actually, you didn't draw the chair. You drew those negative shapes. So you was actually drawing negative shapes. So what that does is it teaches you to look for the negative shapes. Oh, this one I drew it upside down via trap shapes. So you, this one here, I drew it upside down like that, and I also drew it with the negative shapes. That's a, that's a quite a cool exercise actually. So it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You're, you can draw without drawing the thing you're drawing. Again, 
going into the the how the mind is it's all to do with the mind really so again what she's doing here is she's she's teaching you to do what Bert Dodgson says about as well which is draw what you're seeing by drawing the negative shapes you're not drawing the leg so you're not thinking I'm drawing a leg you're drawing these random shapes so your mind switches off it's brilliant this is another little one a little bit of sketchy with a bit realistic to do with the focus this was copying a master so you had to copy a master and this is some pages from the book but they will be in this book they'll be in this one as well I think little, little Einstein <laughs> little Albert Einstein yay this was brilliant this was the one with the little people drawing their little childhood characters I would recommend doing that you know if, if nothing else I would say go and like later today because you don't need the book to do that get a piece of paper and just start drawing the doodles that you used to draw as a child because what's amazing is they're still inside your head because you sort of think maybe I forgot about them but you haven't as soon as you pick up that pen, that pen or the pencil it's amazing how your hand will remember the shapes that you, that you were doing as a child which is I thought it was cool so this here is a second hand book I got it on eBay for I think it's about five pounds I believe it's from the library or something I'm not sure but look it's got someone's name in it so this was a little gift for Leon Leona 2003 it's quite cool isn't it Betty Edwards so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go just go through it a little bit but really what I wanted to say was I definitely recommend this book but like I said I would recommend this one first and I think the best way to do it is to do this one first and then this one because what this one here will teach you how to draw this one here will teach you a lot more about the mind which is brilliant so look drawing and the art of bicycle riding the draw, drawing exercises one step at a time your brain the right and left of it this, this is the bit I loved yes yeah, because basically we've got two brains inside of ourselves one is the creative one is the analytical so doing things like turning turning your drawings upside down or drawing your reference upside down and drawing the negative shapes is training yourself to switch your analytical mind off so a lot of this book is talking about the the relationship between your your brain really your mind I thought it was amazing this one here look experiencing the shift from left to right doing that thing with is that two faces or is it a, or is it a vase it's both again this is what the book's about it's about the illusionary nature of reality so this book is quite a deep book in my opinion yeah but this book is a lot more theory based that's what I remember of it drawing on memories your history as an artist that's all about the childhood getting around your symbol system <laughs> how cool is that perceiving the shape of a space the negative the positive aspects of negative space there's lots of um, paradoxes and I believe entanglement in drawing and this book is really talking about that it's talking about the entanglement of nature because what I've noticed is when you're drawing you're sort of you're sort of seeing through the illusion of the world so I feel like my honest opinion is I believe if you start drawing you will end up becoming spiritual it's almost like you have to become spiritual because you will start seeing you'll start seeing through the illusion of, of reality which will which will make you become spiritual that's what I think portrait drawing with ease the value of logical lights and shadows drawing on the beauty of colour the zen of drawing Look, even the word the zen it's kind of like got the spiritual vibes going on afterward ah oh, this book worked. this book did something really cool I don't know if it's going to do it in this one but in the version I had at the start what you did was you had to, you had to do, do a series of drawings without anything so she said right draw draw a self portrait of your face so you looked in the mirror and you did a drawing 
and this was the first thing you had to do before doing anything. You, you did that, you had to draw a still life or something, and I think you had to draw something from a photo or something like that. And then what happened was, at the very end, you've gone through this book, at the very end, she had, and what you had to do was as well, hide those images. So you, you did a self-portrait and then you hid it. Go through the entire book, you then had to do the exact same drawings at the end, and then what you did was, you got your original ones out, put them side by side, and you, you saw you saw your progress. Again, she like that's how important it is, seeing your own progress, seeing how much you're improving. It's really cool. I hope she does it in this one. I hope that wasn't just a special thing for the for the latest version. Because that was one of my favourite things. But look, like look at this, look, look how much theory we've got going on in here. There's a lot of, a lot of this is theory. It's just, a lot of it is reading, which I like. But my honest opinion is, if I had started off on this book, I don't think I would have got into drawing as much. I don't know, the thing with this one is, you get into it, the thing with keys to drawing is, you get into it and straight away, look, straight away, bang, you're doing exercises. And then the next page, you're doing exercises. P pretty much every page you're doing exercises. So it's like what happens here is you you read, you read what you've got to do, you see examples of what you've got to do, and then you do a thing and you you do it and it, you do the actual thing yourself. So you, you get told what to do, you get told why you're doing it, and then you go and do it yourself. Now what's amazing is at the end of each chapter, look at the end of each chapter, you then go right for, you re you repeat what you've done, you read what you've done, and then you have to mark yourself, so you, you're critiquing yourself. So this book here, the setup of this book, Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodgson, is perfection. He's also got the same thing, look, the vase with the, the faces. He, this is what I'm saying. Both of these books are sort of talking about the same thing, but they've, they've tackled it in different ways. This one is very much like, it's, 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 it's talking about what your brain is doing and then it and then it starts bringing in exercises but the thing is by the time you get to the exercises if you're not somebody who likes who wants to be reading lots of stuff you might have given up on it this one here he's telling you what the brain is doing but you're out you're doing fun exercises along the way so it sounds a bit like i'm being negative about this book but i'm not i, I feel like these two books together are actually the perfect way to go that's what I think, because it's amazing how much stuff I learnt from this book. And I loved reading this book, I really did. I wouldn't have finished studying it if I didn't. Because if I'm not enjoying something, I will, I'll stop doing it. So the fact that I did actually finish this book means I do like the book a lot. It's just I feel like a lot of people will pick this book up as their first book. And I feel like it might be a little bit intimidating. I'm not sure. That's my sort of memories of it. So we're now moving into the drawing materials. So look, here we go. Yes. Look, you've got to do self-portrait. So it is going to be doing... But look, look at this, look. You've got to go through all that before you do... Before you do an exercise. So... Oh, and the other thing was, she uses this glass thing with the... Like you have to you have to get a piece of glass and make or a piece of plastic and you use it as like a viewfinder but the thing is i found some of it quite frustrating i couldn't quite work out if i was doing it right but so what we've got let start see i want to see if it's at the end as well because that was actually one of the best things about this book was at the very end you had to redo the same exercises at the start Oh, I don't know whether they're going to do it, you know. Not sure. Oh, well, if that's the case, I would recommend getting the... I'd recommend getting that one, maybe. I'll have a look in a minute. I'll try to find it. So, look, there is there is a lot of... Ex look, so what you have to do is you have to draw your self-portrait, a person drawn from your memory, so from your imagination, and then you have to draw your hand as well. And then you have to redraw these at the end. 
and then and then you compared them to see how much you've improved. Look, when you finish your thing, be sure that you have titled, signed, and dated each of the three drawings. Yeah, so it is going to do. So you don't need to buy that one then. This one is going to do it. Look, spread the three drawings on the table and look at them closely. La -la -la. The reasons for doing the memory drawing. Oh, look, here we go. This is. Oh, this was brilliant as well. So, the, what I loved about this book was, as you're going through it, it felt like you was actually, you was actually with a class of students or something. <laughs> it's quite cool because uh, this is other people's examples. So this is other artists, like beginners who are drawing. So this is their beginning. This is their first one. This is what they did at the end. Their first one. What they did at the end. So you you see the improvement. And then the thing is, you're going to be doing this yourself. But they it, it, it did that a lot through the book, where you were seeing other artists' examples. So it felt a bit like you were sort of part of a community working through the book, even though these people were... You, you're never meeting them or something. Like a preview of the before and after drawings. Cool. It is very inspiring, actually, when you see how much you've improved. So I'm just going to go through. Look, this is what it's all talking about the the brain. It, I love it for that. Like I said, I feel like in a weird way, if even if you're not an artist, if you are quite sort of what's that word? Oh, what's that word? It's psychology. That's it. If you're if you're into psychology, I feel like you could actually read this book because you're gonna you're gonna. It's fascinating. It is what the mind is. What, you, what happens is you start realising what the mind is doing. Yeah, it's fascinating, it is, like, going into the brain. But look how much writing this book's got in it. Yeah, look, it's full of little quotes as well from famous people. August, Aud, Aldous Huxley. This is what I'm saying. These people, these people, right... There's a, there's a bloke called Anthony Peake, who I love him, I do. He's all about consciousness. He's always talking about Aldous, Aldous, Huck, Aldous Huxley and the doors of perception. In fact, what's he called? Anthony Peake created... He, he wrote a book. Anthony Peake has wrote a book called Opening the Doors of Perception, which was in honour of Aldous Huxley. So these people are actually quite... These are people who are, are all about the consciousness. This is what I'm saying. This book is about the consciousness. But you're also learning how to draw at the same time. Look, we're even going into the ancient history, ancient civilizations. So, it's, it's cool. It's, like I said, basically I could go through the whole book and you can see, like, it, there is a lot of exercises in here, but there's also a lot of theory. So if you're not, if you're not into reading... If you just want to get sort of into exercises, I suppose. Oh, I don't. I don't remember coloured drawings in the other book. I'm sure there must have been though. But yeah, this book covers a lot of stuff. It really does. It's cool, look. <laughs> cool, isn't it? Afterward is beautiful handwriting, lost in art. But that's it, you can see that there's a lot of writing in this book. Whereas if I was to flick through this one, you would see more like drawings. You see? More drawings and more exercises. But there is also a lot of writing. But it's I feel like this book has got a better balance of examples, writing and exercises. That's my personal opinion. But I do still recommend this book. That's the funny thing. And so basically that's it. Like I said, buy these two books together. I would say do that one first and then do this one. You're going to learn so much. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed that. And basically little kitty. She was very quiet. Can you hear her titties? <laughs> her titties are making a crunchy noise. I quite like that sound. Look, right and left. Right and left side of the brain. Drawing on the right side of the kitty's titties. Look, there's kitty's titty. <laughs> Da -da -da.